In our previous video, we tested out three units of Asus's most recent 360Hz monitors, which just got released last December. We put it through its paces as an immersive simulator. You can check out our findings in the video link above. However, normal people don't buy three monitors just like that. I'm Rafael from Hardware Sugar, and this is our review of using a single ROG PG25QNR as seen through the lens of a casual gamer who plays maybe a maximum of two hours a day. In short, you can trust that I am not purposely going to strain my eyes and force myself to look for things about my experience with the monitor which don't immediately come natural to me. I'll be testing this out with my personal rig, which is a Ryzen 7 3700X, RTX 2080 Ti, and Corsair Vengeance 4 sticks of 3 200 MHz RAM sticks. Originally, Asus sent us over a tough RTX 3080 in order to run the triple monitor setup. Regrettably, I forgot to record footage for a single monitor review with the card before I returned it. This, however, is alright, so that we can see how this high refresh rate monitor works with a 2 year old PC. The PG259QNR comes in a matted black plastic finish with a subtle ROG mirror logo in the front and a bigger RGB logo in the back. Asus has been using a similar design look for the past couple of years, however, I am very happy to see that they have moved on to the very distracting logo projection which was the main reason which kept me from getting an ROG monitor in the past. The metal stand has a gamerish vibe to it and I appreciate the copper contrast which makes the design further stand out. The base of the stand is made out of metal, while the rest seems like hollow aluminum. The stand allows for the monitor to be inverted 180 degrees, swivels left to right, and goes up and down. All of which makes this stand out as one of the most versatile monitor stands to come with a monitor. Usually, I'm just used to a monitor stand that brings it up and down, and that's pretty much it. One big bonus, however, is that this monitor comes with a desk mount kit in which you can clamp the monitor stand to a desk provided the width of your desk is thick enough and there is a lip for the mount to clamp onto. I think this is a big bonus because that way you don't need to worry about looking for a compatible and reliable stand from a third party. Personally, I don't use monitor arms as they have a tendency to scratch my precious wooden desk. The length of the screen is 25 inches, a monitor size of which I haven't experienced since I was in first year college. I haven't been below 34 inches in over 6 years, and so it took some getting used to in order to work and gain again on such a small display. The resolution is 1920 by 1080 and I was expecting to be disappointed because again, I'm used to at least 1440p but the beautiful IPS panel covers up any flaws in terms of pixel density I could find. IPS panels are meant to provide a better color accuracy and so this is not a, only a good monitor for gamers but also for professionals using CAD, Photoshop, and video editing. When I returned the other two monitors and installed my MSI Optics MAG 322CQR as my secondary monitor, I was admittedly blown away by how much I missed the extra space. Screen space to me is the most important criteria to me above anything else because I use my computer primarily for work. And so for that alone, if I were buying a new monitor, I would settle for a minimum measurement of 27 inches. 25 inches feels too small once you've tasted ultra wide. The most important feature of the monitor is that it boasts a refresh rate of 360Hz and has NVIDIA G-Sync. I put it through its paces through one recent game, COD Modern Warfare, and one older game, Rainbow Six Siege, and I arrived at interesting results. In Rainbow Six Siege, I deliberately lowered the graphics to its absolute minimum so as to try and achieve the advertised 360 frames. By findings for that, I was only able to get 180 to 250 frames with an average of 210 frames per second most of the time. If you look closely, my RTX 2080 Ti was greatly underperforming, meaning I could still upgrade the graphics without taking a serious hit to the frame rates I was already achieving. This leads me to a very puzzling question. Why couldn't I reach the advertised 360 frames? In the menu option for Rainbow Six Siege, it does recognize that the monitor's ability, but nevertheless, in actuality, I couldn't reach it no matter how much I tried. Rainbow Six Siege was released 6 years ago, and so maybe it's a game that isn't designed to reach such a high refresh rate? In Call of Duty, I did the same thing and lowered the graphics as low as I could. In COD, I like testing on two different kinds of matches. The first is a classic 2v2 gunfight, and the second is Battle Royale Warzone. 
the latter of which takes a lot more effort for a card to run because of the large map it needs to render and the many other players. In 2 vs 2 gunfights, I was getting frame rates between 160 to 200 frames, the average frame rate of which was around 180. COD gunfights are more chaotic and fast paced than Rainbow Six Siege, and so if I wanted to see if the frame rates were a dramatic difference, this would be the best place to see it. I can definitely feel a smoother experience when compared to my MSI optics which is capped at 165Hz. However, an average frame rate of 180 isn't a dramatic change from 165Hz. And so I am forced to conclude that while it is definitely smoother, it is only a subtle improvement as opposed to an in-your-face mind-blowing upgrade. Warzone gave me slower frame rates which was to be expected. I was getting a range of 110 to 140 but mostly averaging just 130 frames. It is important to note that my video card could have pushed the graphics higher like in Rainbow Six and still I couldn't get the frames up higher to be on par at least with the frames in Gunfight. Maybe I'm using the monitor wrong? I checked the settings back and forth though and I can't think of anything more I can do. As promised though, I'm reviewing this through the lens of a casual gamer. and. If I can't immediately get up the frame rates to the advertised amount, then you may have difficulty too, especially if you have a setup lower than what I am testing it with. Finally, this monitor is one of the few in the market which features NVIDIA's Reflex Latency Analyzer, a software which not only coordinates between your graphics card and the monitor, but coordinates with your mouse as well. It detects clicks from the mouse and then measures the time it takes for the resulting pixels to change on screen. Uh, like when you left click and expect to see your gun create a muzzle flash. In order for it to work, however, you need to have a compatible GPU, a compatible monitor, a compatible mouse, and a compatible game. It thus isn't a very open and accommodating feature at present. The ROG Chakram Core is one such compatible mouse and it needs to be plugged in directly into the monitor in order for this software to work. No wireless mouse is currently compatible with this software. After which, you need to play around in the settings and move a box into where the gun flash will originate from. I'm pretty sure that not all guns and not all games will place the barrel of the gun in the same place each time. And so this is not a plug and play feature. And to be honest, I haven't really noticed a difference. However, I'm also not the market for this feature as it is meant for gamers who probably spend 6 hours a day on the same FPS game. NVIDIA has an instructive video which I'll link in the video description. Whew. Now get ready for this. The PG25 QNR locally retails for 47,360 pesos. This amount to me is staggering. My latest monitor which I bought around 5 months ago, the MSI Optics Mag 322 CQR, costs only 29,000 but gives me 32 inches, 165Hz, 1440p, and is curved, unlike the PG259 QNR which is not curved. Visually, from afar, it dwarfs the ROG monitor. Admittedly though, it does not have the ultra-fast refresh rate of 360Hz, but unless you have a rig with a minimum RTX 3080 card and are a first-person shooter gamer who obsesses on the need for the smoothest experience, then I really cannot recommend this monitor to the average gamer. I will try. The remastered Mass Effect series is coming out soon and maybe even Grand Theft Auto 6. These games, while not FPS, are an absolute blast to play because of the role-playing immersion and satisfaction one receives. And you don't need an extremely high refresh rate monitor in order to enjoy them. In fact, these games are best enjoyed with a much larger monitor. In short, for me at least, size trumps frame rates, provided you get at least 60 frames with whatever setup you are using. In conclusion, the PG259 QNR is meant for FPS gamers who take their game seriously, like eSports serious. But after gaming with it for more than a month now, I can't help but notice how small the screen is, regardless of how grand the picture and response rate. I do however have to give points to ASUS for creating one of the few monitors on the market which supports NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer, a software feature of which is so niche that I cannot in good conscience recommend this monitor to the regular consumer for that feature alone. We are giving the PG259 QNR a 6.8 out of 10 primarily because while it might be one of the fastest monitors on the market, it is also one of the smallest and most expensive. It's probably the best tool for a professional, but an overly costly and excessive one for everyone else.